an uncharted planet teeming with life of both predator and prey, the distant planet of the Pikmin is a beautiful and diverse ecosystem that is the focus of the Pikmin game series. The most known inhabitants of the Pikmin world are the species of Pikmin. When one of the Pikmin series protagonists, Captain Olimar, crash landed his ship onto the planet of the Pikmin, he decided to name these strange creatures as Pikmin. These Pikmin don't attack Olimar and seemingly adopt him as their leader, with the captain himself speculating that they could be seeing him as some kind of parental figure. In this video, we'll be exploring the Pikmin world, traversing many intertwined theories and facts, in order to present a deeper theory which you may have already seen from the title. The Professor Elven Gad of the Mario universe actually created these Pikmin. In order to increase the plausibility of this theory, we need to address other points of discussion around the Pikmin world. And as we get to these, I will also present other possible theories and rebut potential arguments that won't support the ultimate EGAD hypothesis. Throughout the life of EGAD that we see presented through many Mario games, we see that he is a man obsessed with studying the paranormal and the continuing crafting of inventions. With one of his most notable inventions being the Poltergust, a vacuum that's used to catch ghosts in the Luigi's Mansion franchise. As more and more games are released with EGAD, or seemingly as the Nintendo world progresses, EGAD's inventions become more and more elaborate. With the invention of a time machine in Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, the invention of E-Gates, which are electronic portals that are introduced in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and later in the third Luigi's Mansion installment, Luigi, who was formed from goo that EGAD had gathered and mixed with his own coffee. This Guigi is even sentient, with Professor Egad's research journal describing that Guigi is capable of independent action. Pikmin are also considered semi-sentient, with them being able to perform actions that have been ordered by their non-Pikmin leader. And this is what at the very least Guigi could do. So we can definitely see that the evolution of Egad's invention could transition from the creation of one Guigi to the creation of the Pikmin. But if Egad were to have created the Pikmin, then he would have to have existed in the same universe as the Pikmin, at least during the time when they were ultimately created. Egad is associated to the Super Mario universe, while the entities that are associated with Pikmin are often related to the Pikmin universe, with these two worlds often having a disconnect between the two. There are three main reasons as to how Egad could have created the Pikmin that now reside in the Pikmin universe. A. He could have travelled to the Pikmin universe to then create the Pikmin. B. He could have created the Pikmin within the same universe as Super Mario. Or C. Created the entire universe of the Pikmin. Now creating the whole universe of Pikmin seems to be a lot more improbable compared to just creating Pikmin in an existing universe. And as Egad's inventions allowed him to travel through time, there is the possibility that he could invent something to let him travel through universes, or even create a universe. But it also seems that Egad is more intent on investigating anomalies happening in the Mario universe, notably different dimensions, primarily the paranormal one, but nothing out of this universe. So could the Pikmin universe exist alongside the current universe? In the Super Smash Bros. series, the Pikmin and their adopted Captain Olimar appear as the playable character. In Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Olimar is fought in his unlock battle on a stage representing the planet of the Pikmin, also known as PNF 404. This stage is called Distant Planet, which suggests that the planet is actually quite far away from at least our current perspective, which could be the Mario universe, as it's the most commonly referenced universe in Super Smash Bros., with many of the Super Smash Bros. roster originating from the Mario universe. But the original Japanese name of this game, Toaru Hoshi, doesn't mean a distant planet, it actually translates to a certain planet. So perhaps this planet is not actually as far away as it seems. According to the Pikmin wiki, Shigeru Miyamoto is said to have stated that the planet of the Pikmin is in a state where humans are extinct. Other sources such as MTV journalist Matthew Hawkins state that Miyamoto proposed the idea that Pikmin actually takes place on Earth, and that the humans are long gone, extinct. And Miyamoto's proposal of the Pikmin planet being Earth is widely accepted and mentioned, but curiously, no one can seem to verify his statements and find an actual source of the interview that was said to have taken place. So let's try and look into this further. 
Pikmin 2 and Hey Pikmin, a 3DS spin-off of Pikmin, contained the concepts of treasures, which are collectibles that the player gathers throughout their playthrough. The majority of these treasures are not naturally made, and seem to be quite similar to items that exist on Earth, such as the Courage Reactor, which resembles a Duracell battery, and the Quenching Emblem, which looks like a bottle cap from a 7-up soft drink. In one of Olimar's miscellaneous entries, he mentions that a pale white moon floats overhead, which is a similar description to what Earth's moon would have. In the first Pikmin game, Olimar also states that the planet's atmosphere contained a dangerously high concentration of oxygen. While it might be dangerous to him and other inhabitants of his planet, Hokotate, and the planet of the protagonist of Pikmin 3, Kopai, potentially previous local inhabitants, like humans, may have been able to survive and thrive with these levels of oxygen. Venturing back to Super Smash Bros., the distant planet stage had the development name STGERTH, which means that at least the Smash Bros. developers view the Pikmin planet as Earth. In Pikmin 2, there are two fundamental pieces of treasure, the geographical projection and the spherical atlas, and these two items combined display a spherical view of the Earth, providing Olimar with data to find new locations on the Pikmin planet. However, if we read the sales pitch of the spherical atlas, it states that this globe is the design of a map of a savage planet, keeping ambiguity as to whether this globe has a past depiction of this planet. Pikmin 3 helps clear the concerns around this topic though, as if we have a look at the world map in Pikmin 3, it seems to have a very similar geography and structure to Earth. And while it's not clear if this is the actual Earth, it's at least the Pikmin's universe version of Earth. Now let's go back to the Mario franchise, and we can find that Earth also exists in this universe too. Most prominently, in Super Mario Odyssey, Mario and Cappy travel Earth in an airship called the Odyssey, in order to prevent Bowser's wedding to Peach. This Earth has a similar, in terms of vagueness, Earth shape as Pikmin has, but unlike the Pikmin universe, this Earth is full of humans, so there's no way that these two could be the same Earths. Or is there? Well, remember the thinking that on Pikmin's Earth, humans have long since disappeared? So maybe, the Pikmin's Earth is just Earth far into the future, after both humans and the Mario Kingdom have faded away. Pikmin Wiki user GameFreak75 actually theorises that when Olimar first lands on the planet of the Pikmin, humans were still present on the planet. The Valley of Repose in Pikmin 2 is a snow realm, but part of the realm is actually a crosswalk area, which would suggest that it's a walkway for people. There are also snowmen riddled throughout the realm, but no evidence as to who could have created them. Game Freak 75 furthers that Olimar is actually just visiting remote locations of Earth, and because Olimar and the Pikmin are so small, nobody actually knows that Olimar has visited. I, however, think that things such as the snowmen are more easter eggs and pieces added in by developers or artists, without thinking about the consequences it would have on the underlying lore. The ship that Captain Olimar crashes with, the SS Dolphin, has a Geiger counter, which Olimar states is always letting off spontaneous clicks and buzzes. This alludes that there is radiation present on the Pikmin planet, and could bring to reason as to why there are no humans left alive on Earth anymore, and also why creatures like the Pikmin seem to be mutating. Furthermore, the fauna sprinkled around Pikmin could be seen as mutated versions of their Earth animal counterpart. For example, the behemoth Fosbat could be derived from a bat or a moth, with this now adapted bioluminescent form being a result of mutations. The bearded Amprat could also be seen as a cross between the guinea pig and a rat, with its name actually being a combination of a measurement of electricity, Amp, and the rodent rat. In Pikmin 3, the developers have titled the files for area selection as Pangaea Ultima. Also known as Pangaea 2, this is the potential configuration of Earth's continents after a long time of drifting. This means the developers of Pikmin 3 relate the Pikmin's world structure to one of the supposed Earth in a far future that was also defined to fit around the parts of the world that was already shown in Pikmin 1 and 2. Egad could have created the Pikmin, and this may have coincided with the destruction of most life forms on Earth, with the Pikmin's being able to live on and evolving over time until we get to a time where Olimar crash lands on Earth. Pikmin have presumably changed over time taking their characteristics from insects, rocks, and potentially even humans from a long time ago. 
The Bulbmen are an example of the forms that the Pikmin can take due to their parasitic traits, being a combination of a parasitic Pikmin and a Bulbul. Egad could have originally created a single type of Pikmin, and over time, it changed and inhabited other beings to produce different types of Pikmin. But curiously, Pikmin may have not been the only things that have changed over time. Have you noticed that Olima looks quite similar to someone? Egad seems to be a close resemblance to a Hoctatian, with the same complexion, figure, and even a small tuft of hair on the top of their heads. The captains from Kapai also look the same as the Professor and the Hoctatians, so they could all be the same species. GameFAQs user Chris Camberg notices some similarities in Olima's voice in Pikmin 3. And Egad's voice in Luigi's Mansion. Their dialect seems fairly similar, with just a difference in pitch. But this might not necessarily mean that they are intended to be the same language, with Ghost in the Shell suggesting that this is just a gibberish language that Nintendo often uses to save money on voice actors. YouTuber Joey J also compares to how both the Hoctatians and Egad are driven by money. A lot of Olimar's correspondence with family include the mentioning of money, with Olimar's son mentioning how his allowance had been cut, and then later doubled. Egad himself pretty much flat out tells Luigi to give him his money too. And maybe this is a common trait around the species, as it's definitely a trait found in humans in general. As we mentioned earlier, the Pikmin do not attack Captain Olima, or any other captain throughout the Pikmin series that we control, and seemingly adopt them as a leader or a parental figure. But it isn't really stated as to why they follow the captains. Pikmin forum user Hunter4408 suggests that it's because of the antennas that the captains have, which resembles the top of a Pikmin. The Shia Squid furthers this theory by stating that the captains are slightly taller than the Pikmin, and have glowing tops compared to the Pikmin, whose head only glow when they're idle, so they could be considered as a superior Pikmin. But what if Pikmin adopt these Copites and Hoctatians as their Pikmin leader because it is what they were created to do? With Egad being their original leader, the Pikmin have been waiting for a member of the same species to appear on their planet, to then lead their species to fulfil their purpose. There's at least one problem here though. Olimar states that the creatures of his planet can't breathe a deadly poisonous gas, oxygen. So we can presume that the Hoctatians cannot actually breathe oxygen. Kapites, however, can breathe lower levels of oxygen, with the Pikmin planet having an oxygen level around three times more than Kapites. But with the Kapites bringing back fruits to their home planet, their oxygen level would slowly increase as the plants grew. Dragon Keeper 19600 suggests that despite this, the Hoctatians and Kapites are still descendants from humanity. Dragon Keeper outlines that there are many cultural similarities between Hokratate, Kapai, and Earth. Two of the ships passed in the original Pikmin game are named Libra and Sagittarius, and in Olimar's Discovery Notes, he states that they are named after the astrological signs. Why would an entirely different race on a far away planet use the same zodiac astrological signs as the humans? In Pikmin 2, Two treasures, the Rubber Ugly and the Paradoxical Enigma, both resemble the form of rubber ducks, with Olma stating that it's his first time he's ever seen anything like this, and that the Rubber Ugly is a hideous treasure, while hypocritically, he sees the beauty in the Paradoxical Enigma. Contrarily, Captain Charlie from Kapai actually brings a rubber duck with him on all of his missions as a good luck charm, which means while the rubber ducks are not present on Hokotate, they are very present and popular in Kapai, similar to Earth. Dragon Keeper concludes that Earth grew too hostile, with humans leaving the planet and settling on other planets. And over time, these humans then adapted to their own environments, and slowly forgot their ancestors' life on Earth. These new environments also could have been more favourable to smaller individuals, which is why all the characters end up being much smaller than humans were in Mario's time. These human ancestors, such as Egad, were long forgotten in unwritten or lost history. So the timeline of the Pikmin is placed after the Earth that both us and the Mario universe recognise. But why is it that Egad seems to be the one bridging these timelines together? 
The first official appearance that the Pikmin seemingly had in the historical Mario universe was in Mario Golf Postal Tour, with Pikmin jumping out of a patch of flowers. But the actual first mentioning of Pikmin in the Mario universe is in quite a familiar game to this theory, Luigi's Mansion. If you go to the settings menu of Luigi's Mansion, where EGAT is displayed predominantly on the screen, there's an option where you can view a Pikmin movie. Is this just a coincidental alignment of game releases, or maybe it's a subtle placement of one of EGAD's pieces of work? EGAD is a notorious and specialised inventor who seemingly places his study as his number one priority above everything else. YouTube and Nintendo Land speculates that EGAD is in fact evil, with all of his inventions all part of a greater, larger plan to create a massive army of individuals such as Luigi's or Robot Mario's to do his bidding. This would fit our narrative quite well, as the Pikmin could essentially be EGAD's large army. But a lot of people, including myself, do not specifically think that EGAD is necessarily evil. Sure, he gives, or at least creates, the catastrophic magic paintbrush which Bowser Jr. uses to graffiti Isle Delfino in Super Mario Sunshine, but he also creates Flood, which is used to clean up the graffiti. I think EGAD, as Spark937 put it, is more of a chaotic neutral character who actually doesn't care who he gives his inventions to, just as long as he obtains value from the use of the invention and can study it. He's dedicated to scientific progression, not necessarily encouraging trouble, but this could accidentally be caused along the way. With this, the creation of Pikmin could just have been another one of EGAD's studies, and these Pikmin could have caused the destruction of Earth or just could have been a witness to the desecration and was able to adapt to the new environment. Who knows, maybe the hopeful imminent release of Pikmin 4 could help confirm or invalidate this theory. Wait a minute. This isn't my world. Disappointed! In hindsight, I think the frustration of no Pikmin 4 release has helped fuel this theory. But please, Nintendo, bless us with more amazing games for us to unpack and examine the lore of. Lastly, if we launch off into the Space Junk Galaxy of the Super Mario Galaxy franchise, we can come across a strange looking planet that seems to resemble the Hokotate ship from Pikmin 2. In Super Smash Bros, this ship also has a trophy, with the description, a battered old spaceship used when Hokotate Freight first opened. This would more than likely disrupt our married Pikmin theory timeline if we accept this inclusion to be anything other than a non-canical easter egg reference. This ship in the Space Junk Galaxy is also quite similar to Olimar's original ship, the SS Dolphin, that seems to be quite larger and a vague design to either of these ships, so it's more likely just a subtle reference. Ultimately though, the origin of the Pikmin and the other species in the Pikmin world are quite vague, and we can only speculate about these origins for now. Maybe games in the future will help clear some of these views. And before I sign off, I'd just like to recognise other people on the internet that I haven't mentioned, like Cool Guy Sean, and I'm a Magic 8 Ball AMA, who briefly speculated on a theory similar to this. As usual, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the comments on this video and many more to come.